Should you switch phantom power off if it isn't needed? When phantom power was first invented, it was designed so that any mic that didn't need it wouldn't be affected by it. So why do we now worry about switching it off? Welcome to the Audio Masterclass podcast. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Come and visit us at audiomasterclass.com and discover more topics like this in the Audio Masterclass newsletter at audiomasterclass.com slash newsletter. Here's a quote from the user guide for the Focusrite Forte audio interface. If you are using a capacitor microphone, click the 48 volt button to supply phantom power to the mic. Don't turn this on if you're using any other type of mic. I suspect the reason for saying don't turn this on is that a user might have an overly delicate microphone that doesn't require phantom power. Because of the microphone's inadequate design, it is damaged, then the user wrongly blames Focusrite. So if Focusrite tells users to switch the phantom power off, then their complaints department can sleep soundly at night. Although I can't imagine Focusrite gets enough complaints to warrant having a whole department for them. Go back a few years when microphones were built for professional studios, broadcast and live sound. They found their way into home studios too, but mics had to be professional in sound quality and also design and build quality, otherwise they simply wouldn't do their job. It would be standard practice, therefore, to leave phantom power switched on all the time. Capacitor mics would use it, other mics would ignore it. Mixing consoles would be designed so that phantom power was all on or all off, and everything worked fine. Ribbon microphones, though, are delicate flowers. Where we come into problems with phantom power, it is with ribbon microphones. Ribbon microphones come from an era of audio even before phantom power was invented. But they've had a resurgence in popularity of late because they have an interesting sound texture. They are, however, quite delicate. A well-designed ribbon microphone shouldn't care about phantom power any more than a normal dynamic mic. However, any condition that puts 48 volts across the ribbon will blow the mic or potentially severely damage it. This is very unlikely to happen when mics are connected with XLR cables unless there is a damaged or incorrectly wired cable. It is much more of a risk where a mic is connected through a patch bay, but this is less commonly done in home recording studios than in professional studios. There is a useful guide to this problem at Royal Lab's website. It says clearly, Royal ribbon microphones are not usually affected by the presence of phantom power. However, they go on to give good reasons why you should take care. In practice, if microphones are properly designed, then there should be no difficulty with phantom power. In fact, I would go so far as to say that, in this day and age, if a microphone had a problem with phantom power, then it shouldn't be considered adequate for professional use. But to a certain extent, it's inevitable that we have to accept things as they are. So I propose three alternative courses of action. One, only use microphones that are okay with phantom power, and simply leave it on all of the time, like they do in broadcast studios. Two, make it your habit to switch phantom power on for capacitor microphones that need it and switch it off immediately after use. Three, avoid ribbon mics, but that would mean denying yourself their special tone colour. As an alternative, you might consider buying a dedicated ribbon mic preamp. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening. Come and visit us at audiomasterclass.com newsletter.